I started Single Daddy Daily right after my divorce, and I'm ashamed to say that I did it for all the wrong reasons. There was a lot of pain, and after my divorce, I felt like I wanted to share that with the world, to give a voice to all the anguish and sorrow I was feeling. I needed a catharsis, and I used Single Daddy Daily as my vehicle. I soon found out that this wasn't the approach I needed to take. Our mission at Single Daddy Daily is to take the struggle out of single parenthood and create a community where people can find the tools to thrive as single parents. Strong, resilient, happy kids is always the goal as parents, a goal that can become more challenging when facing parenthood alone or in a blended family. Divorce and single parenting is more and more common now than ever. The challenges that we face as single parents permeate all aspects of our life. We want to be the number one resource for single parents out there who are having a tough time navigating the waters of single parenthood. We cover everything from parenting strategies to dating after divorce, finding love after divorce, and creating a new blended family. Divorce can rob us of those feelings of acceptance, and it took me a while after my divorce to learn to love and accept myself. To be honest, some days I still struggle with that. We all do. Single Daddy Daily is still my place of catharsis, but now it's from a place of love and not anger. Hurt people hurt people. That's why the cycle of hate and hurt continue to live on unless we are the change as parents first that this world needs. We are here for you, and this is what this community is all about. Don't just survive, thrive. The Single Daddy Daily way. We are a movement, we are a tide, and we are rising. Evan DeMarco, welcome to Single Daddy Daily Podcast. How are you doing today? <laughs> you know, I was uh, I was just looking outside trying to figure out uh, is this the zombie apocalypse? You know, do I need to uh, do I need to go all Walking Dead right now? Uh, I, I, you know, I'm okay, man. I'm I'm. It, the last time we talked, I wasn't doing great. I think that quarantine life has become a little bit more of the norm. Yeah. Um, personally, I'm feeling better, but. Well, let's get into that. But how are you doing? Because, you know, yeah. we're, we're in different parts of the country. We're, we're actually using technology to communicate with our fans. We're, we're podcasting via Skype. How are yes, you doing? Being, we're, I'm doing good. We're practicing responsible social distancing. Um, you know, one of the funny things about this time is the memes are just they're so funny these days. They're out of control. Like, people have so much time on their hands. There's so many funny memes. And I saw one of these social distancing police uh, pretend police out there like yelling at people and they're like hey we're a family like you know like hey practice social distancing and it was just it was just funny to see what people come up with these days so i know that this is a serious thing going on obviously with you know there are people dying i this past week i actually had two people within my inner circle not someone i knew directly but someone i knew that knew this person that died from the coronavirus wow. and they were both in their mid to late 30s no underlying or uh pre conditions that they knew of at least i know of and they ended up dying from it and so i think that's one of the things is it's easy to look at it from a distance if you don't know anyone you're like oh it's not that big of a deal but then you know someone personally and then it kind of changes your dynamic like all right wow th this person that's 39 that's my age is dying from this so it really just it changed my perspective a little bit and so i'm not trying to make light of what's happening but I do need a break from the seriousness. So <laughs> I, uh, I've i been trying to find some positivity and doing positive things as well. And uh, But to be totally honest with you, man, it, I have my girls this week. So last time we talked, I don't think I had my girls. Having my girls this week is totally different because uh, uh, homeschooling, or as some people are calling it, crisis schooling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they came with this politically correct term of uh, instead of homeschooling. But um, – it's hard, man. It's really hard because the first few days I was miserable because I was like, all right, here's your schedule. We're going to stick to the schedule. You're going to do this. I'm going to do this. And it's going to go according to plan. And before <laughs> you know it, I'm just like halfway through the day yelling at them, uh, mad at myself for getting so upset. And like they didn't like me and I didn't like myself. And I was like, you know what? This isn't working. And so I had to kind of backtrack and take away the, the structure a little bit. So it's not so hardcore, you know, like I can do that for myself. But for my kids, it was just it was causing chaos where I was just so frustrated with them. They were frustrated with me. And it just I knew I couldn't sustain that. And so I've kind of had to like let go. I think that's the topic of this podcast is learning to let go of control of so many things. Um, and, but all in all, I'm doing good. But let's I wanted to talk to you about like, OK, for the parents out there that are having to homeschool their kids, 
this is hard. This is a challenge, especially as an entrepreneur or business owner trying to, you know, like right now we're on a podcast. <laughs> I'm like, hey, girls, for the next two hours, I need you guys to be quiet and kind of do your own thing. And, and hopefully they are doing what I'm asking them to do, but they're probably on TikTok or they're probably like, <laughs> you know, um, who knows what they're doing. So I, I, I hate that. I do. I don't like that. I like to be involved with them. I want to do stuff with them. I'm right there with you. And it was funny. We talked about social memes and it was, I saw one and I'm going to botch it, but it was to the extent of day one of parenting, everything went to according to plan day two of like quarantine homeschooling. They're now 10 hours on their tablet. You know, it's like, <laughs> cause it, 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 like I, I'm in that same place and, and I feel the exact same way you were. It was for the first couple days, there was just this weird energetic disconnect yeah. Like things were just not going the way that I wanted to. She's being defiant. I'm getting frustrated. Then she's getting more frustrated. And it's this escalation. It just kept building and building and building. And then I, I find myself like saying and doing things. I'm like, wait a sec. This is not me as a parent. Yeah. You're like, we have these parenting ideas of who we want to be. We have these like, okay, this is the kind of parent that I am. And that's all well and good when things are perfect. But when yeah. the when the world is ending, it's like, oh, well, now we're really being tested on is this the type of parent we are? And I felt myself failing miserably. So like you, I'm like, okay, how do I take a step back? How do I reassess and how do I create a system that's not based off of expectation? Because I know that when we have these expectations and they don't come to fruition, that's when we get frustrated. So I was like, I'm like, okay, how do I get rid of the expectations and how do I find a system that allows us to work uh, her to get some level of education so she doesn't become like a YouTube moron after you know this isolation? <laughs> And, and most importantly, physical activity, because that's where we're losing yeah. it, right? It's like this, this, you know, what is that, Wally? That yeah. I've seen a lot of those yeah. memes about Wally. It's like <laughs> we're all going to be fat blobs by the end of this. Oh, but I, by the way, I'm, I must applaud you on your uh, your workout videos. Oh, thanks, dude. I that that's uh, something that I have to do to kind of keep my sanity, to because I don't have the motivation to exercise. I really don't, you guys. Like yesterday, I did an exercise or a workout video. I'm like. Halfway through, I'm like, why am I – this sucks so bad. Like I don't want to be doing it. But you know what's funny is like I was – found myself yesterday yelling at my kids to sit down and watch a movie. Like like we couldn't just sit down and watch a movie. I had to like yell at them, be frustrated with them because like we couldn't just sit down and relax and watch a movie. I'm like this is so – this is like so – this is so hard. It's so hard. So I, I just found myself like trying to stick to this schedule, this structure and – the expectations that you talked about, like this isn't working. So, okay. So what works? So what I found yesterday, and this is what's hard as an entrepreneur is like, I sat down with each of my daughters individually and we did work together. So, uh, before, you know, I was like, Hey, you guys do your work. You kind of know what to do. So I'll just let you do it. But they didn't end up doing it or they didn't end up, you know, staying, uh, according to the plan. And then, you know, so now I have to give up my time. So I had to cancel some calls yesterday because I'm like, hey, I got to work with my daughter on this and, uh, you know, we have to do it. And it, it was better because if I'm there doing it with them, then it's something, it's an activity we're doing together, even though it's boring, but for me at least. But for them, it's just that quality time. And, you know, my business might not be doing as well as I wanted to, or I might not be able to be spending as much time as I want to on my business. Um, so that's kind of the balance that I'm trying to to find as a parent. And I think people out there can probably relate to this. If you are trying to run a business from home, that's the thing is, is working from home doesn't really work out that well. Unless here's the thing. If you are a married couple and you have a spouse there that's t helping you out, like, hey, I'll take the kids during the day. You get your work done. That would be an ideal situation, right? But as, as single parents out there, it's you don't have that option. You don't have like a spouse, a wife to be like, all right, I'll do this while you do that. Like tag team. That's I think that's what's hard about being a single parent. Yeah. And now that <clears throat> now that so many people are quarantined at home, there's an entire contingent of the workforce that for the first time ever is working at home. Yeah. So it's like you don't have babysitters. You don't have nannies. You don't have daycare. You don't have school. So now all of us are thrust into this environment where for a lot of people who've lost their jobs, you know, that's a, that's a problem unto itself. But there's a lot of people who've just been told, go home and work. You know, here's your remote login. Do do what you need to do from home. So for people who have never experienced that work from home, uh, you know, type of life, and now you've got kids in the mix, it's chaotic. Uh, and so one of the things that I found, I don't know if you remember this, like I, I found early on when we would travel on airplanes, 
traveling with kids is like a constant effort in keeping them entertained for about 15 minutes at a time. Yeah. It's like, okay, we're going to watch this video for 15 minutes. Then we're going to have a snack for 15 minutes. And then we're going to play this game for 15 minutes. Then you're going to color for 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, so what I found, and I think that this is, is uh, I'd love to get some feedback from the audience sure. on this one is setting timers. Like, so the plan is not necessarily that we're going to have this whole structured day, but it's, we're going to work in like small chunks. Like yeah. daddy's going to take a call for 30 minutes. And then after that, we're going to go play tag in the front yard. Um, yeah. And then we're going to, then we're going to try to do this kind of work. And then we're going to, you know, so it's just having those small chunks of time, which for kids is a lot easier because they can compartmentalize 30 minutes. They can't compartmentalize. Like I've got eight hours of work to do today. <laughs> you go do, you know, go do the entire multiplication tables. Um, I want you to learn quantum physics by the time the day is over <laughs> and then we'll discuss over dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's so true. I think that's a great idea. And that's what I found works for me, too, because b before I was like, hey, OK, math for an hour like that doesn't like that doesn't work for them. That doesn't work for me either. Like I can't I can't do math for an hour like that would be <laughs> that would be hell. So I'm expecting them to be like, all right, for the next hour, you're going to math. You're going to do math for the next hour. You're going to read the next hour. You're going to write an essay like it just doesn't work for my girl's age, eight and ten. If they were teenagers, maybe that would. But I've found like, hey. We're all going outside for 10 minutes. We're going to set the timer. We're going to go for a walk. We're going to take our dog and just get outside. Or what I've been doing recently is like, hey, we're all eating lunch together, right? We always eat dinner together, um, but lunch they usually eat at school with their, their friends. I'm like, hey, let's go for a picnic. So we have a trampoline in our backyard. And what I found is like, hey, for 20 minutes, we're going to eat lunch, and then we're going to play two or three games of Uno. Uno is one of the, the my girl's favorite games these days. And so that way it's like, okay, we're, we're taking a break from school or whatever else we're doing work as well. And it allows, I think that the, the small chunk of times is genius because yeah, our kids ages, they can't do like an hour or two of like one thing. They can do YouTube, an hour or two of YouTube <laughs> consuming. <laughs> <laughs> That's about it, you know? So I think the other part that um, I think it's important to talk about is to be forgiving for yourself, to yourself. Especially during this time. If you're a single parent and you have your kids with you, you're trying to work and be a teacher, it's hard. Like one of the funny memes I saw recently was, uh, you know, uh, both my kids got suspended for fighting and uh, I uh, – or, or the teacher was, was uh, drinking on the job. <laughs> you know, one of the tired <laughs> – one, one of the teachers got fired for drinking on the job. So – Anyways, it, it, the school is homeschooling is not going so well. Um, but I think be forgiving of yourself. Like we we're trying to put these expectations on us and our kids to be like, all right, we came out of this so much better and we progressed. But to be honest with you, dude, like I feel like I'm way more stressed than I've I've ever been because of the situation. I'm still trying to figure out why. Like I work from home all the time, but why am I more stressed than ever before during this time? Like I'm trying to see the positive in it sometimes and this is me just kind of being open vulnerable like dude i i'm struggling and here i am an influencer saying be positive and you know gratitude and uh you know um make the most of the situation just change your perception but i'm i'm struggling some days where i'm just like man this sucks like i i, th I think it's maybe just the the social aspect of it like i can't fly to california to see you or i can't hang out with my friends and grab a drink like i can't go to the movies like i can't I feel bad just for going to the grocery store sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. and I think that pressure is, is for me, is taking a toll on me. Well, I think that's, that's true of most people. Right. And yeah, we work from home. We're entrepreneurs We're this has kind of been our life, but now we've been cut off from some of the things that have been really important to us. Some of the things that kind of defined us, you know, I, I haven't traveled in, this is the longest that I haven't yeah. been on an airplane <laughs> I know. in probably 15 years. <laughs> Uh, but to that it's extent, crazy. like now it's the mounting pressure of every time you turn on the news, what's going on in the world. People are dying. People are getting sick. It's like you, you know, quarantines, things are extending out longer than we thought. It's there's this mounting pressure and the social anxiety about what's going on in the world. And when is someone that we know uh, going to fall victim to this? When is when are we going to get sick? You know, what's going to happen when all that, uh, you know, if when and if we get sick and there's a high probability that, yeah, we will get sick if we don't have it already or haven't had it already. Yeah. Then you throw on top of that the economic factors of this, right? Like how many people are now unemployed? We've got the you know the largest largest loss of wealth in in our generation. 
And now th those might be opportunities to reinvest and to get back into the market. And there's just some of the things we can discuss, but there is an insane amount of pressure on us right now to, you know, to kind of deal with all of this. And as much as we might want to try to stay positive, that can be a real challenge. So I think, as you've always said, is give yourself the opportunity to to feel this, to be in it, to recognize like this, this ain't good, man. We're not in a wine and roses situation. Um, and, and we can focus on the positive. We can focus on coming out of it. But for right now, how do we live in this moment? How do we kind of try to exist, um, create some sense of normalcy for ourselves and our kids and look towards a brighter future while still recognizing like it ain't, it's not coming soon. It's yeah, so true. You know, I'm, I'm kind of thinking back to, you know, post divorce life, like after my divorce, like I felt like I hit rock bottom. I didn't have tools to help me pull me out of that, of that hole. And since then, I've learned so many amazing tools. I've worked with therapists and life coaches and read so many books and learned about meditation and practiced it and gratitude lists and positive affirmations. And I've learned all these things. Uh, I've, I've, I've gotten all these amazing tools um, that have helped me you know, deal with situations where I'm like, you know what, I can let go of those things that I can't control. And it's frustrating because now I'm in a position where I'm like, man, why am I feeling the stress, this frustration? Like I have all these tools in my tool belt. Why are they not working? And I think it's, it's the art of, of falling apart. Like it's okay for us to fall apart sometimes because we feel like now we've built up this armor and we have these amazing tools. Like nothing can affect me. Nothing can bring me down. Cause I've learned so many things from my past experiences that have helped me out of those, those holes in the past. And we think, okay, well, I'm never going to go through that again. But I think life <laughs> has an interesting way of teaching us. <laughs> like, no, you, that's not how it works. So it's not like you do the work once and you're done. It's not like you go to the gym for a month and you're ripped and you're shredded the rest of your life. Like, th there's going to be ups and downs. And and um, so I think right now, for me personally, I'm going through that. I think a lot of a lot of other people are. But the cool thing is that I'm not going through this alone. This isn't just some funk I'm in. Like literally the whole world is feeling this uh, to a certain degree. And so that's what kind of gives me hope is like – and maybe that sounds selfish. Like, hey, I'm not the only one suffering. Like I'm glad other people are suffering with me. But what I mean by that is is p other people feel my pain. And you f people yeah. – you feel more understood when someone else is going through it with you. It's not just you that's suffering. It's so many people. And so, hey, let's suffer through this together, but we'll get through it together. So the, the, my different, the difference in my perception now is that – I know that this isn't permanent. Like sometimes like after my divorce, um, I was like, this, this is going to be my life. Like my, my life's just going to suck and I'm just, I'm going to suck. And um, I know that that feeling like it is not permanent. It will, it will always get better. Things will always get better. No matter how sad, how hurt you are now or how depressed or how hard things are, it's not always going to be that way. And so I mm -hmm. know that I just got to train my, myself and talk myself um, through that. So hopefully this is helpful to other people out there is like know that this pain is not. Permanent. No, it's not permanent. And, and I think anyone who has gone through a divorce, we see we never see that light at the end of the tunnel. You come out of the divorce and you're like, when is this going to end? When is the pain going to go away? When am, when am I going to get off of this roller coaster? And eventually it happens. Eventually, you come off of it and you recognize, okay, you know, I survived that. And with that survival, as you said, there's kind of almost this recognition that, well, that didn't kill me. So since that didn't kill me, I can survive a lot more and I can learn the tools. I can go to therapy. I can get a life coach. I can read. I can work on personal development. I can practice gratitude and meditation and all the things that we've talked about for so long on Single Daddy Daily. But as you said, those are tools in the tool belt, but sometimes you kind of go, you have to go back in and fix the house every now and then, you know, yeah. it's <laughs> the house can fall apart. And, and so those tools just give us the opportunities to practice things, you know, practice um, skill sets when times are bad, like they are now. So that, that's a perfect one. And, and one of the things that I've been doing is the breathe app. I highly recommend this to people, right? Like huh. guided meditations in the morning. So for people who've never meditated, but this might be a really good time to start and you have no idea where to begin, download the app. It's simple, you know, five minutes in the morning, 10 minutes in the morning, 15 minutes in the morning, just someone to walk you through this, you know, this, this breathing exercise, this meditation. They've got ones on there right now that are actually like guided meditations on dealing with the coronavirus. You know, yeah. it's, it's a cool That's way to, to get into something that allows you first thing in the morning 
to reset your your mindset to look forward to a brighter day and recognize that hey good times are coming but you got to have the bad times to really appreciate the good ones so you know that's kind of where we're at right now it's there's a lot of anxiety in the world there's a lot of stress uh, but give yeah. yourself the permission to to feel that give yourself the permission to be okay with that and recognize that even though we can't go out and and hug the person that we want to hug um, unless they're in the house with you you know technology gives us the opportunity to pick up the phone and be like hey you know whoever how you doing yeah. Um, and I think we talked about this last time. I challenge people to to you know use technology to reach out, but don't make coronavirus the center of your conversations. <laughs> Every conversation I've had over the last week has been like, it's been about coronavirus. I'm like, I'm sick of it. I don't want to talk it's about so corona true. anymore. <laughs> it's so true, man. The other thing I would recommend uh, on top of the meditation app is you mentioned the workouts. Like for me, I'm not motivated to work out, but finding a way to stay accountable and, um, you know, to, to move your body, for me here in Utah, I can still go outside. I can still go outside, walk around, get some sunshine. And that right there is so beneficial for us right now in this time of – versus like sitting at home all day. Man, if I had to sit home and couldn't leave the house, that would be really hard. And a lot of people that normally go to the gym as their exercise can't go to the gym. So it's like, all right, what can you do to stay active? And we all know exercise is just as important for our minds as it is for our bodies – so finding a way to stay active, um, whether that's jumping on a trampoline, going for a bike ride, going for a walk, uh, doing push-ups, you know, you know, a thousand push-ups, you know, every day, whatever it is, like find a way to move your body every single day, I think is really beneficial. Um, from there, uh, the other thing that I'm doing, which, you know, uh, like I said, I'm still struggling, even I, though I have all these tools. The other thing is is supplementation and eating, you know, as healthy as I can because. I'm eating in pretty much all the time. Every once in a while, I'll order out to support local businesses. But, you know, focusing on my health right now, I know is a, is a very important and a priority, especially during this time. So supplementation, you know, eating real food, exercising, getting some sunshine every single day, meditating. These are tools in my tool belt that I think, you know, most of us should have access to, uh, hopefully, um, which can help you through through this, this situation. Anything else that we're missing, Absolutely. Evan? Uh, there's a ton that we're missing, and, and so okay. as we drop this podcast, um, you know, uh, we encourage all of you guys out in Single Daddy Daily World to, uh, you know, to send us some messages. Uh, talk to the community. What is it that you guys are doing with kids? What is it? Uh, what creative things yeah. have you guys come up with to help support your kids as they're going through this? What are you doing to keep sane? Um, again, I, I laughingly, I, I jokingly say, there's going to be a lot of babies in nine months called Corona. <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, and I think you posted the meme is like sex is the one thing that uh, cures coronavirus. Constant sex. <laughs> Constant <laughs> sex. So, <laughs> yes. Uh, um, you know, there's a lot of endorphins that go with that. So working out, all of the things, you know, lots of sex. Yeah. Uh, there's the position sex Bible. Uh, I okay. highly recommend going through that. You know, three hundred and sixty five. Coronavirus position. <laughs> there is, yes, yes. It's it's you know from There's across a coronavirus the coronavirus position. <laughs> it's using remote control devices. <laughs> you got to oh, stay six man. feet away from the person. Um, no, I, it, look, it's it's just we're all going through this together, guys. And I know that especially with kids at home, working from home for the first time, these things can be really frustrating. So. Uh, well, the one big takeaway is, is give yourself the permission to, to be frustrated, give yourself the permission to kind of fall apart and know that you have to pull it back together at some point. You know, don't be afraid to tell your kid, I need a five minute timeout and leave the room, <laughs> go outside and take yeah, a deep put breath. Yourself in time out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, like daddy needs a timeout. I'm going to go, I'm going to go jump on the trampoline for five minutes and just, you know, it, it's, we're going to get through this, but it's, it's a day by day and, and every day is a new opportunity to, to learn from the day before to not make the same mistakes and to really support our kids, our communities, ourselves, as we go through this, this trauma and, and know that there's going to be a lot of healing to do on the flip side or on the, on the tail end of this. But right now it's just, let's survive, grow stronger and live to fight another day. Yeah. One last thing I was going to say is uh, a really cool idea that I just randomly came up with because my girls are working on writing and they have to read, write, and, um, you know, I want them to work on art as well. So draw something every day. So what we did is we had a Lego competition where we had a bunch of Legos. We took about, you know, 30 to 40 minutes to create some kind of creation. And then we had to draw that creation. 
and then we had to write a story about that creation. So nice. You know, uh, it was a really cool idea, and we all did different things, different themes. I did kind of a, I think we had like a, a Moana themed uh, Lego set, and so I used Maui as my prop and created this outer space surfboard and then created this story about how he's like this he's like one of the avengers <laughs> who is like a surfer <laughs> dude he's like an avenger but a surfer dude in space and like you know just kind of create a story around it and then my other daughters created uh you know the, uh, something about like a mermaid land and then the other one i can't remember what the other one was was like a salon in outer space i don't know but it was like really fun and it's three activities in one where you create a Lego set, you draw it, and then you write a story about it, and we kind of all kind of presented it to each other at the end. It took like, I would say, a good couple hours, and it was really entertaining. And um, so, just some ideas for for other parents out there looking for some, you know, um, some ideas for having fun, but also something productive like writing and coloring. That's awesome. Um, and again, I challenge yeah. all of the parents listening to Single Daddy Daily to to take Drew's advice. Um, and then post it this out. Yeah, on post our Instagram it. or our Facebook. We'd love to see what you guys come up with. I was thinking about that as you're saying it, and and I don't know what it is, but I, I'm not I'm not manual in that respect. So I, I was thinking about what I would do. I'd I'd build a block of Legos, <laughs> and then I would draw a block of Legos, and then I'd have to come up with a creative way to describe a block of Legos. <laughs> I think for me. Um... It had to do with my – like as a kid, I would build kind of spaceships. Like have you seen Lego movie, that spaceship guy from the 80s? He's like, spaceship, spaceship, you know? Oh, yeah. I don't know if you've seen that guy. That's kind of like me. Like I, I just – that was like my thing as a kid was building spaceships uh, with Legos. And so that I, I kind of came from that. But like, yeah, a block of Legos, you'd be done in five minutes, and that would be really, really hard. But it, I promise you it's actually really creative – for the parents to kind of get involved too. And, and, and so I'll post my pictures. I'll send it to Katya to post on, on uh, our single daddy daily platform. Let's see you and Piper do some, and then we'll maybe start a little uh, hashtag. Um, I'll think of something creative, but uh, I think that's a great idea to kind of see what people come up with. Cause I posted it on my, in my family, uh, posted it to my family to see what they thought. And they were like, this is such a good idea. So I they're going to start great doing idea. it. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's start that. Um, I will get out the Legos and there we see go. what I can come up with. <laughs> you know, my daughter is a lot more creative than I am. I, I don't know. You like, I just like. You, know. you got to be a master Lego builder. You got to think like you're like Emmett. The, you know, the, from the Lego. <laughs> you have no idea how to build, you know, uh, you Legos. Know, may, maybe there's a hidden Lego genius inside of me, but I'm going to go ahead and say no. It's, you know. <laughs> I, I'm I'm gonna make the most valiant effort possible, but I still think I'm gonna come up with a block. You of could Legos. come up but with I, a double double decker couch like Emmett did, where friends could sit on top and the bottom and <laughs> and what, what is the, the master says like that's the dumbest idea in history. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I will say this though, like I, my yeah. my Lego design might suck, but my story will be creative. There we go. See that? So that might you might shine. So that's what you should do is give a like a, give a prize away for the best Lego creation. Then the prize for the best picture of it. Then a prize for the best story. So that way each person can kind of win. Like whoever has the best Lego set might get a prize, and but someone might write a better story. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. So, well, you know, I think we should uh, let's, let, let's go ahead and put together a contest on the Single Daddy Daily site. Um, okay. Would love to see what you guys come up with. I think this is a great idea, Drew. Also on the Single Daddy Daily site, as we kind of bring this podcast to a close, we want to make mention that we've got a whole new set of quizzes out there. So as we've really talked about improving the tool set, improving uh, all of the tools and the skills necessary to be a single uh, single parent, we've added some really new, uh, some really cool new quizzes to the SingleDaddyDaily.com site. So highly encourage everybody to head on over there, check out some of the stuff that we're doing. Um, post your Lego slash art slash story type of thing. Um, Maybe I have an idea, and we can discuss this offline. Is there's a uh, there's a prize that we can offer? Um, and as we talked about supplements earlier on in the podcast, and supporting people in their health and wellness journeys uh, while they're stuck in quarantine, I think Drew and I might be able to uh, throw some uh, some prize prizes out there to you guys. There you go. All right. Complete uh, wellness. <laughs> yep. So what do you think? Do you want to uh, you want to close this one out? Yeah, we listen, we really, really appreciate you guys tuning in to the Single Daddy Daily Podcast. And this is something that um, Evan and I truly believe in with our hearts. Like, we don't make any money from this. <laughs> you know, this isn't something we're doing for profit. Like, this is something we do because we're passionate about being dads. And we, we just love other single parents because we know that struggle. We've been through that struggle. We are going through that struggle still. 
And um, we just want to create a community for you guys. So we appreciate you guys tuning in, listening to us, and hopefully you find this valuable. And if you know of other single parents that should be listening, uh, please send them the link to our podcast or our blog um, because we have a ton of resources on there, um, whether through our blog or our podcast. And subscribe so that way you're notified every time we come out with a new podcast. And um, we just really appreciate you guys. Like much love, much respect to all of you, and keep moving forward, you guys. You guys got this. You can do hard things. And we'll be back next week with another episode of Single Daddy Daily Podcast. See you guys later. See you guys next week.